Greetings and welcome to today's Pastors Ponderings. This is Pastor Phil here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ, downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. I am so pleased to have you joining us. Well, if you are like us here at St. Paul's, you will soon be celebrating First Communion, perhaps, Confirmation with your younger folks. And we'll be doing the exact same thing. Matter of fact, Confirmation is coming up in just a couple of weeks. In our case here at St. Paul's, the youth have to write a paper, just a brief paper, explaining their faith. They all did a fabulous job this year, so thank you kids if you're watching. But that brings me to think about the Lord's Supper and, and what we really celebrate. So I'm going to go and read, actually, it's, it's from Mark uh, 14, and um, it's entitled, Jesus Eats the Passover Meal with the Disciples. So this is language that you're going to be very familiar with. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the day of the lambs for the Passover meal were killed, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and get the Passover meal ready for you? Then Jesus sent two of them with these instructions. Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher says, where is the room where my disciples and I will eat the Passover meal? Then he will show you a large upstairs room, filled up and furnished. And there you will get everything ready for us. So the disciples left, went to the city, and found everything just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. And that ends my lessons for this day, but it does leave me thinking about First Communion, about Confirmation. You know, as the youth have completed their Confirmation classes, I'm hoping they learned about the history of our faith, about God, about Jesus, the Holy Spirit. I hope they've learned about the sacraments, and then I hope they've learned something about themselves as well. It is, I think, impossible, though, to fully appreciate the meaning of the Christian faith if you don't have some familiarity, at least, with the entire, I'm going to use the word drama, of the Bible. From Eden, where Adam and Eve enjoyed a carefree experience, to Platmos, which is in Revelation, where John and his visions of a new heaven and a new earth were laid out, there are many persons who doubtless assume that our faith begins with Jesus and the 12 disciples, or, or maybe even with Paul and the apostles, as they sought to interpret for the early church the meaning of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. If St. Paul was here today, however, he would advise us that our faith starts at least as far back as Abraham, when God chose the special people to be God's own people. Our faith began with a covenant, a covenant made and later, Moses sealed that covenant with the blood of an animal. Jesus then affirms that covenant at this upper room last supper. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. This is a, this is a covenant poured out for all of you. The Christian faith is to be understood as a continuation of that covenant relationship between God and God's people then and God and God's people now. It means, I think, that we're to be proactive, especially as we're observing the covenants of God that God has made. There was a book written not that terribly long ago, entitled The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It, it states that 
in this book. It states that in this book, you just don't sit around waiting for life to happen. You, you go to it. You embrace life. You take the initiative. You don't just go, oh, well, you know, what happens, happens. People who are, I don't like to use the word losers, but I'm going to use the word anyway. They simply react to life. Winners, though, are proactive. They're the ones that go out with gusto to get the things that they need and to have a productive life. I think that God is a proactive God. God does not wait around for us to come to God. God comes out to us. Think of the most popular images we have of Jesus Christ. The Good Shepherd is one of them, with a lost lamb hoisted upon his shoulder, and Christ standing patiently. Or how about this one? And we all have this picture. We all see this where Christ is standing at the door knocking. He's seeking you. He's seeking your love. He's offering forgiveness and hope and opportunities. Jesus Christ at the door takes the initiative. God takes the initiative. Just as God came looking for Adam and Eve in the garden, so does God come looking for for each and every one of us, ready to help us make the decisions that we need to make to get through our life. Now, that's not unusual. That's the way God works. God will use whatever tool is at hand to speak to us, his sons and his daughters. God is proactive. God takes the initiative and God comes to us before we would ever think about going to God. We do not have to be perfect to enjoy this covenantal relationship with God. There are so many people today who feel unworthy of God's love. God is committed to us for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. But in this covenantal relationship, neither sin nor death can cancel any of that commitment. Our sin cannot cancel our, our relationship with God. When Kellogg's Cereal Company found that their sales of Kellogg's cornflakes were sagging, they instituted an advertising campaign in which people were told to taste them again for the very first time. Do you remember that? A relationship with Jesus Christ can be just like that. If your Christian life has become dry or stale, even cold, maybe it's time Maybe it's time to get Jesus Christ known in your heart again, or maybe for the very first time. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to examine your relationship with God. Be with me for a moment of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for the gifts you've given, for the blessings you bestow. We thank you for our younger generations as they complete another year of confirmation class and are confirmed into the churches, no matter what church they may be belonging to. We pray that you place before them new hopes, new possibilities, new dreams, and that each of us search deep into our own hearts as well to discover exactly where we hope to go as Christians. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's just what I'm kind of thinking about today. So um, congratulations to the confirmation classes from whatever church you may be going to from 2022. Godspeed, God bless, and uh, thank you for joining me. Amen.